Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial video. Today we are going to be continuing on the custom mob tutorial videos um, and you can see last time we had this abomination over here. Uh, but also our uh, level 1 slime that we created uh, using command blocks in the last video. So today uh, we're going to take that a little bit further and I'll show you how to make custom spawners that can spawn your custom mobs with all their custom drops. It's a lot of custom stuff, I'm now realizing saying it over and over again, but that's fine. Uh, and then also how to set this up in MC Stacker so it's a lot easier and you guys don't have to write out a whole bunch of boring syntax over and over and over again every time you want to make a new mob. So, without further ado, let's get started. So the absolute easiest way to make custom spawners and custom mobs is of course to use our favorite tool, MC Stacker. I feel like they should really sponsor me at this point, but <laughs> that's okay. All jokes aside, it is way, way easier to make custom mobs and determine how they spawn and edit them rather quickly using this tool. So now that you guys know the syntax and the general usage of how to do it in command blocks, here is how I build most of my commands and then I can paste them and change them in Minecraft as needed. Usually you use the summon command to making mobs and things like that, but we're not going to be using that right now. I'm going to be showing you how to make custom spawners. So instead, we're going to actually want to use the give command so we can give the player the spawner with our custom mob values. You can see here it'll change over to our give command. This is mostly all fine. We just want to give the nearest player. You don't really need to change any of this. But what we are going to change is the item. So if we come down here, uh, a list will pop up. I don't think it uh, pops up in the video. I remember looking at that in the last video. Um, but there will be a list and you just basically want to go to spawner and a whole bunch of parameters will pop up on the bottom here. Now you can name the spawner if you want to make it easier for yourself so you can recognize which spawners are which if you're placing a whole bunch of them down. Um, so for now, we will just call this zombie spawner just by typing it in there. You can see it also changes up here in our little blue box. Um, that's fine though. We don't need to change anything else about it. Uh, it'll automatically give us one if we don't change any of this. Blah, 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 blah. Now... What you do want to change about the spawner is this stuff down here. This gets a little bit tricky and sometimes confusing on what actually does what, so these little green question marks will be your best friend. Um, you can see these little yellow windows should pop up in the video. So spawn count determines how many mobs to spawn each time. Also requires the min spawn delay property to be set. So if you want a certain amount of monsters to be spawned every time, or at least attempt every time the spawner sort of ticks, uh, you can set that number here. For us, we'll say like maybe three zombies. Uh, the spawn range uh, is exactly where around it will place uh, the mobs near the player. This is not how close the player has to be for the spawner to work. This is the actual, think of it like a square box around the spawner, how far the spawner can place mobs. So if you're in a very cramped area, you might want to make this a rather small box, but if you're doing this out in a field, perhaps you could actually make it a much larger box. You can see that the default value is 4, so if I just go ahead and put anything in here like a, like a 5, this will make a 5 sort of block cube around uh, the spawner where you want it to be. Now, if you want there to be any delay uh, on the spawner itself, you can use this next delay tab. This basically means as soon as a player enters the range, which we will uh, put down here, the required player range, if you want it to spawn enemies immediately, or if you want to give them a couple seconds to get a little closer to the area, you can add that delay here. Uh, for our purposes, we definitely don't need a delay, so we will actually put it to zero. You can also change between ticks and seconds if you need to. So after we have one spawn uh, using our delay of zero here, this next section, the minimum spawn delay, is going to check how many ticks at minimum until the spawner tries to spawn more uh, mobs. So for us, I'll just switch it to seconds so we can make this a little bit easier on ourselves. Um, and we'll say after maybe six seconds, uh, we'll want to try and spawn them again. That's at minimum. At maximum, we'll put it at maybe eight seconds. Uh, it should be noted, never, ever, ever put this max spawn delay to zero. It will crash Minecraft. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Um, and then here's the other big one, the max nearby entities. There is a very big uh, formula here. So all this basically says is how many entities do you want in a 16 by 16 by 16 area from this spawner with their entity ID at one time. Uh, so for example, even though we're trying to spawn three zombies every time on this time interval, let's say we only want a max of five zombies. In theory, it should spawn three, and then if the player doesn't kill any, the next time it spawns, it should spawn two, assuming these zombies didn't walk super far away from the spawner. This is to control uh, the amount of entities around your spawner. I strongly recommend setting this value, because if you don't, 
uh, or if you set it to an incredibly high value, mobs will crash your server. It, it will just keep spawning and spawning and spawning. So it's a good idea to think about how many mobs you want around the player. And then finally, the range that the player needs to be close enough to the spawner uh, where the spawner will actually attempt to spawn mobs. Uh, again, for our purposes, we'll say anywhere within maybe six block radius. That's up, down, left, right, forward, and back. Okay, so that's just setting up a spawner. You could do this for any mob, really. Uh, but this little plus right here is where we get into our custom mobs from before. So if we click this little spawn potential, it's going to open a very large uh, window down here. And this is where you get to create your custom mobs. So like before, I could actually just uh, input the slime which I think I'll do just to show you guys how that works. Uh, so bear with me for just a sec. Okay, so I just very quickly went back through and added all of the values for our slime. I'm going to show you guys how to do this. I just wanted to show you what it would look like in-game as an action. So I'll go ahead and copy this right here. And if we come back into Minecraft and uh, go ahead and place a command block down, because it's far too big to type in the chat, this should give us, oh, uh, even though we called it a zombie spawner, a spawner. Um, which will spawn our level 1 slimes. You can see the radius as I get farther away, it does actually pause a little bit. Um, I don't know if it spawns mobs in creative mode or during the day. Um, that's actually a, a good point, so let me set it to night. There we go! Uh, and you can see this time it actually spawned only one level 1 slime. Uh, it doesn't always spawn the, the amount that you want it to spawn. It could also be because we have a couple of other level 1 slimes around. Um, so remember the max was 5. But... You can see that it does work. Um, it takes a little bit of configuring uh, to get used to the timing and all that kind of stuff, but here they are. Slimes successfully spawning from our spawner. Okay, now that we've done this, let's go ahead and walk you guys through first how to make a cool custom mob using MC Stacker, and we'll do it right in this spawner so we can just spawn them with the spawner. So we've already done slimes, so like the name of the spawner, let's switch that to zombie. Again, this there's a whole dropdown that pops up uh, with every entity in Minecraft, just like in the command block. So you can just sort of scroll through and pick which entities you want to spawn as custom mobs. So we have all these tabs right here, uh, which we can change their motion, um, if they're on fire or not, uh, if they're just visually on fire, which is pretty cool. So why don't, why don't we make a couple of, uh, couple of fake flaming zombies? We'll set that visual fire to true. Um, air is if they need to breathe or how long they've been suffocating for, uh, if they're on the ground, if they don't have gravity. This is a, uh, strange one. Only use this if you really want something to be, like, permanently floating. Um, it generally won't pathfind towards the player, though, so you're not going to be able to create flying zombies. They'll just sort of float there. Um, our zombies definitely don't need to be silent, they don't need to be invulnerable, uh, and they don't need to glow. Um, we will give them a custom name that we will change, uh, from level one slime we will instead call this a level one zombie and again we'll put a little space right here uh and instead of it being green text like it was in the slime i think we'll just keep the whole thing red uh which should be okay just in case we'll switch that to red uh so you can see very easily here you set the custom name visible to true um you have a little text section uh where you can input anything you want change the color you can actually also make it bold, italic, things like that. You can add other text sections, just like we did in the command block. So we have this level one as the first part, and then zombie as the second part right here. And then down here, I've also already given him the enemy tag, which you can just go ahead and type in this little tag section. Uh, you can add lots of tags, I believe, if you just separate them, yeah, with a comma. Um, let's also give him the zombie tag. There we go. Um, okay. So that is the default stuff uh, about the zombie. Now, if we go over to the right-hand side, um, you don't really need any of this stuff. Uh, this is where you could put the path to your custom loot table if you are using a data pack, uh, but we are not, so we don't need to change that. We don't need any of this stuff. Now, active effects. This is where you can really start to give your mob some interesting flavor. And it doesn't work super great on very basic mobs. I used a lot of these on the Pumpkin boss mob. But just to show you, uh, there's all of the potion effects in Minecraft. Uh, even the ones you can't get. I believe blindness is in here somewhere. Uh, yeah, there it is. Blindness. Um, maybe even bad luck somewhere. Yeah, there's bad luck. So if you want to give any of your enemies uh, some interesting traits, this is the place to do it. Let's say we want some faster zombies. We could give them the speed buff here. Um, or some slower zombies. We could give them that there. Uh, strength, but you can also change a lot of these with their attributes down here as well. So is there anything that we want to give the zombies that's a little bit more interesting? Well, fire resistance would be pretty good because they are visually on fire, but maybe we want them to be permanently immune to fire. So let's give them just fire resistance 3. Why not? 
and we'll set the duration to pretty much max, which I think is is close to this. There, it doesn't it doesn't go much higher than this. If we click on this, uh, it doesn't actually tell us. That's totally fine. And we'll set it to seconds. Um, we don't want it to show the particles uh, to let them know they're under a potion effect. We're just going to have them be a, a flaming zombie that doesn't get set on fire. Water breathing doesn't really matter too much. We definitely don't want them to be invisible, although you can do some cool things with invisibility. Uh, poison and wither is not going to help us at all here. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Glowing. Levitation is interesting. It, you know, makes them float up and fall back down, but I don't think we need that. Uh, slow falling is one that I do put on a couple mobs, especially slimes, because it sort of makes them parachute down to the ground, which is kind of cool, but it usually works best for mobs that can jump like slimes. Uh, and that's pretty much it. We'll just give them fire resistance for now, and we can turn off, uh, we can hide the active effects. So persistence required again, because we're putting this in a spawner. We're not going to set this to true. We'll just keep this unset. Uh, we definitely want them to have AI, and we don't want them to be able to pick up loot. So this is where you can set it to be false. Now, we're going to give them some drops that they can drop. I think we'll have them drop coins. But keep in mind, zombies can use their main hand, which is where I actually have this uh, coin right here. So instead of them actually holding the coin that they can drop, because that's going to look a bit weird, we'll copy uh, this item right here, and then we will delete it. And then we will come into their offhand right here, and we will delete this and click paste. So now we have a coin in their offhand, which, as far as I know, zombies cannot use. Instead, in their main hand, let's have them hold uh, maybe a flint and steel. We're going to make these guys uh, fire zombies. Well, not a flint, a flint and steel. If we want them to drop this, uh, we can keep the drop chance to be 100%. But I'm going to say they can't drop their weapon, which means we don't actually have to change the name and lore and all that kind of stuff. But you can if you want. If you want to give them like a sword uh, that they can drop, keep this at 100% or whatever drop chance you want. You can name it, give it some lore, give it some enchantments. So it can be like a rare weapon that the players can get from the zombie. Um, but we're not going to have them drop it, so we actually don't need the count either. Uh, I think they can hold a flint and steel. I think that is something that they can hold. Uh, but I, I guess we'll find out. I haven't actually tested that before. We're just doing this all live. Um, here, you could actually give it custom model data if you know how to work in Blockbench. So if you wanted to give them uh, just a generic item like a melon or something and then texture it to look like, I don't know, a bear trap or something like that, you could do that. But I uh, am not proficient at all in Blockbench, so that's something you could figure out on your own if you wanted to. Um, and here you could even give it, uh, can destroy or can place on if you gave them like a torch or something like that. But we don't really need anything else about this flint and steel here, so we will hide that. Um, actually, real quick, uh, just to make sure that they can't get it, you want to set the drop chance to zero. That means it will never drop, just to be safe. Uh, now if we check the offhand, uh, the coin drop chance we want to change to be one, uh, or 100% with that. Uh, the coin should be the same as before, same as the slime. Now, like I said earlier, you can use the other uh, body slots on a mob to determine what they can drop, but like zombies and skeletons can wear a lot of armor and stuff like that. So instead, we come down to the boot section right here, and let's have the zombies uh, rarely drop. Let's just make it simple. Uh, a golden golden apple. There we go. Got there in the end. We don't need to change anything about it. We're just going to add this to the drop of our rare zombies. You could name it and give it some enchantments and stuff, but we'll just have them drop a golden apple. Now. You'd want this kind of thing to be rare, but for the purposes of this video, I'll just make the drop chance, you know, 0.9 for 90%, and then only drop one. Okay, so now even though it's in the boot slot and zombies can make use of the boot slot, you can't actually wear golden apples, so it won't look like they're wearing anything on their feet. This will just be in their boot slot. This is a good sort of trick or workaround to make mobs drop things in all of their slots. So even though this is a level 1 zombie, we'll set their health and max health to be 8 down here. We can just hide that. Um, the follow range is interesting on how long they follow a player. This we don't really need to edit right now. Uh, they're certainly not sleeping, so we don't need to change that. Uh, knockback resistance, they definitely don't need to be resistant to knockback. Movement speed, though, we can make them a little bit quicker. So the sort of formula for calculating movement speed does get a little weird in Minecraft. As you can see right here, the mob or player's maximum speed in blocks per second is a bit over 43 times this value, but can be affected by various conditions. I found putting things like 0.03 is kind of close to normal, which is a little strange. So if you do something like 
We'll try 0 0.04 and see how fast those zombies move. We could always adjust it. I think zombies move a little slowly anyway, so maybe we have to bump this up. Uh, their attack damage will be, I don't know, maybe like three? Yeah, we'll do three half hearts for a level one zombie, or maybe two. Um, we're not going to give them any armor value, armor toughness, uh, and we're definitely not going to give them any knockback. Zombies specifically get these attributes uh, down here, the spawn reinforcements, is baby, although other mobs can get that as well, can break doors if it's converting to a drowned, lots of cool stuff. I did just think though, why don't we go back to their flint and steel, and we're going to make this a fire zombie, right? So if we go into enchantments, uh, if we show all enchantments, it might work if we give it, uh, not flame, fire aspect. This doesn't always work, but sometimes it will work on any physical item. So we'll give it fire aspect one. Uh, hopefully this will allow the flaming zombie to set the players on fire. Okay, so I know that was a lot of talking, but this is our finished mob inside of our finished spawner. Now, I want to show you one more thing that you can do, which I did to the uh, squee or the squid bee uh, from the first video. If you come down here, there's this little passengers plus. If you click this, you can allow other entities to ride on top of your entity. Now, at first, this sounds weird, like, you know, you could make a pig ride on top of a zombie or a bee on top of a squid, but you can also do invisible entities that you want as well. For example, if we wanted a zombie with sort of a ranged turret attack, we could add a passenger to be a skeleton. Um, and then what we could come down to is uh, wherever you could go into active effects of the skeleton and give it invisibility. So the skeleton would be invisible, you could make it have no particles, and the skeleton, in theory, should just shoot at the player from the back of the zombie. Pretty cool. But what this also allows you to do is make area of effects, kind of like I did with the squid ink or with the pumpkin and his poison clouds. So instead, if we come all the way up to an area of effect cloud, you can see that there's a lot less uh, abilities to do here. And I'm not going to put one on this zombie. I'm just going to show you how you can do it. Um, you don't want to give it a name or anything like that or tags or team. You can pick the specific particle that it looks like. Uh, so, for example, we could do some dragon breath. Uh, and then you can change all aspects of the particle cloud, how often it reapplies whatever effect you give it, the size of the particle cloud, if it grows, how fast it grows, um, if you're in it, how fast it shrinks, the duration of the cloud itself, uh, after you get into it, uh, how long it takes to despawn, uh, how long it's already been a particle cloud, how long until it gives you an effect, uh, and then finally, you can color the particles if your particles allow that, which I don't think Dragon Breath does. Uh, and then you can pick a potion. Now, you can just do an uncraftable potion here and choose specific effects, but if you wanted something like weakness in general, you could just do the weakness long potion and then give it the uh, give it some extra weakness if you wanted it to. But you could also just set this to an uncraftable potion um, and give it any effects that you want to, like Strength 1, Nausea 1, Night Vision 1... Uh, and in theory, this cloud would persist around your mob like your zombie, so whenever a player walked into it, they would get these effects. This is super useful for creating custom mobs with different uh, ways to hurt the player, because you can't really code in custom attacks unless you want to get into command blocks with boss scripting like we did with the pumpkin. So instead, you could just sort of give them area of effect clouds that are small, or maybe don't last for a super long time, that would give the player nausea to confuse them, or give them poison or wither. So this is an incredibly useful tool that I suggest you make great use of. Uh, but we are not going to put it on our little zombie, so we'll X out of that. Now, we should be done with this. So if we copy this command right here and head back into Minecraft, we still have our slime spawner over there. Uh, we will paste the zombie spawner that we just created. Uh, although I guess that first one was the slime spawner. Here it is right here, uh, zombie spawner. And I'm pretty sure if we do F3 and H to see advanced tooltips, you can see, well, has only two NVT tags, I guess, but that's fine. So if we come over to here and we plop our zombie spawner down, and probably we'll have to set it to night again. All right, so it took a little while there, and unfortunately it looks like the zombie can use its offhand slot, so you might want to put that coin in maybe its chest slot or something like that. But here is our level one zombie. Oh, they're spawning at a rate of knots now. I think I had to make it midnight for that to work. So if we head over to survival, uh, these should be our custom mobs. And it looks like their movement speed isn't as fast as we wanted it to be, as they cannot move right now. But if we go up to them, sure enough, the flint and steel does actually set us on fire for a little bit. 
Um, you can change their movement to be a little quicker. I'll go back and edit that. But if we go ahead and attack them, look at that. They still have their Rotten Flesh drop. You can't get rid of that unless you use a loot table. Uh, they did drop the coins, and they also dropped a Golden Apple. Now, of course, because we gave them fire resistance, these guys won't burn during the day, which <laughs> I guess is an issue in and of itself. But that is how you make a custom spawner with custom parameters and spawning your very own mobs with their own attacks, their own health, and their own loot drops. So as you can see, it's a little bit of trial and error. There are some things to work out, like changing the coins to be in a different slot and <laughs> actually giving them a bit more movement speed than 0 0.04. But those are things you can play around with on MC Stacker itself. And that's it. In these uh, videos, you've learned how to make custom mobs, uh, how to give them custom names, health, damage, and we also learned how to make our very own spawner that you can place around your RPG map in different locations for players to trigger, that spawn your very own mobs with loot drops, uh, abilities, and things like that. So hopefully, this can jumpstart your path to making your RPG project. Remember, if this helped at all, uh, a like would really help the channel and the video grow, of course. Uh, and subscribe if you want to see more Minecraft tutorials like this. Uh, we should have a couple more uh, in our RPG series coming out relatively soon about all sorts of different RPG aspects like fast travel and things like that that you can do. Um, and scripted rooms and things like that, which should be awesome. So if you want to check those out, make sure you stay subscribed and hit the notification bell so they actually pop up in your subscription feed. Per usual, if you have any questions uh, about future things or anything I've done in this video, pop them down in the comments below. Most of the commands, if not all of them, should be linked to in my paste bin in the description of the video. Uh, but I think that is it. So thank you all very much for watching. And until next time, see ya!